Fallout 4 modding recently went through a revolution. No longer do you need to sit there and painstakingly download hundreds of mods to have a good modded experience. Instead now with literally just like five clicks, you can have a several hundred mod load order that is ready to play. What we're talking about today are some mod packs, or at least that is what almost every other gaming community calls them. But of course the Bethesda modding community is special. So here they go by mod list. A curated list of mods that will give you some of the most memorable and unique experiences you've ever had in Fallout 4. As of late, mod lists have been getting really good for this game. This to the point where I think for many of you watching, this is going to be the thing that gets you interested in Fallout 4 again. There are entire mod teams popping up creating these experiences and even custom made mods for mod packs to make them even better. But you know what else sucks? Demonetization. Thankfully, our demonetization saviors are here, everyone's favorite mobile game sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, which you can download for mobile or PC totally for free right now. And if you've been feeling lonely this Valentine's Day, don't fret because Raid's got you covered. They have their own special Valentine's Day themed adventure, Raid Love Quest. From now until March 14th, simply head over to raidlovequest.polarium.com and you can win all kinds of prizes like Raid Champions that you could make your own Valentine or even Amazon gift cards worth up to $1,000. And everyone's able to use the promo code SaintValentine23 to get a small Valentine's gift in game. But that's not all. As also this month raid had its forge pass season 7 kickoff and the three month long titan event is still ongoing there's always so much happening with this game like even partnering with prime as this month's prime gaming drop is jenbo the dishonored who is a perfect champion to take into raids arena and raids arena is where true champions are crowned as here you can't just bully the ai but you're going to have to face off against other players in turn-based pvp combat my personal strategy is just trying to immediately nuke one of my opponent's champions as quickly as possible so it instantly becomes an uneven battle, but in order to successfully do this, you will definitely need to increase your team's speed via artifacts so you don't get nuked first, and you know, maybe even have a healer or two in case things go badly, but it gets even better because new players are able to use my link or scan the QR code on screen here to get a free starter pack with a ton of in-game loot. I think such Fallout 4 is going to be the mod list for the masses, the reason many of you watching right now do in fact reinstall Fallout 4. Such Fallout 4 is one of the larger vanilla plus mod lists available right now, one of the most popular options for good good reason. This one's going to be incredibly simple to install. It's going to be a Nexus collection, so you simply have to download the Vortex Mod Manager, download this collection, and the entire mod list will be applied to your version of Fallout 4. All you need to do is click play and you are in game with several hundred mods installed. And there's one pretty big asterisk around all of that in order to have this seamless installation experience where all of the mods you need are downloaded without you doing really anything, you will need to have Nexus Premium, which will run you about $7 a month. Not having to do several hours of work for a measly $7 is pretty worth it to me. But either way, the core of this experience is going to be an enhanced Fallout 4. One of the first things you're probably noticing in the background is the game visually will look way better. This is thanks to some of the optional but highly recommended ENB files you get with this. And more importantly, a ton of graphical mods are going to be applied to your game, so the textures of Fallout 4 are going to be hugely upgraded. And like, this is one of the big appeals of mod lists to me. There's a ton of texture mods out there. Like, in fact, my Fallout 4 is almost completely retextured thanks to a bunch of different mods that I have downloaded here. But I didn't have to go through this process of getting them all and adding them to the game. Somebody did that for me. And even beyond some of the visual mods on the texture side, there's a whole host of additional modernizations like HUD and map mods included so you can have a bit more functional functionality as well. And although I think the visual upgrade is a big appeal of this mod pack, making Fallout 4 look better, look like an actual 2023 game, thankfully they didn't only do that, but also included a bunch of mods that will boost your performance. So I was able to explore what I consider a very faithful visual upgrade to Fallout 4 while maintaining pretty good FPS. The vast majority of the time, I was over 100 FPS when not in downtown Boston, and even in downtown Boston, I was healthily above 60 FPS most of the time. This was definitely one of those mod lists that had me stopping and admiring the visual overhaul to the commonwealth but also just how many frames i was getting but there's going to be a bunch added on top of that there's a boatload of lore friendly weapons added with this one these are going to be nicely distributed into the enemy level list so as you do encounter enemies that are familiar they're probably going to be using new and unique weapons that you haven't seen before and even for me somebody who has covered thousands of fallout 4 mods at this point there were a bunch of weapon mods i had never seen or simply forgotten about it really made some of those early game combat encounters that are very if you played Fallout 4 several times, feel very fresh and unique. 
And if you are looking to have a few of the more unique experiences in Fallout 4, this will also include some of the more lore-friendly quest mods out there, like Bleachers and Sim Settlements too. So you will have some additional options around questing and completing Fallout 4's story in a different way. But really what such Fallout 4 is trying to be is that familiar Fallout 4 with a ton of upgrades almost across the board. From the visual perspective, the game will look far better, the game will actually run better even though it did get a visual upgrade, and there's going to be a ton of new weapons and armors to make those enemy encounters even more interesting. All the while, you can continue to complete the Commonwealth story as you know it, or even try out some of the new and very lore-friendly quests that feel very at home in Fallout 4. In many ways, such Fallout 4 really feels like an official remaster of Fallout 4 for 2023. But maybe you've already played Fallout 4. You know that familiar story, and you want something a bit different. Well, Ground Zero is going to be the first mod list we cover in this video from Fallout 4 Experiences. They are a team that is creating and maintaining multiple mod lists at once, and even creating custom mods in order to deliver these experiences, and they are some of the highest quality experiences out there. Ground Zero is going to be a completely unique experience for Fallout 4. Here, the Commonwealth has been impacted by a viral infection. Those familiar quests, the main storyline is largely gone now. You're not going to have the option to save Preston and the Minutemen because the viral infection already got them. Instead, what you're going to find here is a far more desolate Commonwealth that is going to be filled with zombies. And although most of that old Fallout 4 story is going to be largely gone, there still is a core questing component here, it's just new and fresh. Right off the bat, this mod list is going to give you a very specific directive right as you start in the game. Alright Operative, you've just arrived in Ground Zero. Primary objective is to eradicate any traces of the virus. You have a role and a job of rescuing survivors, clearing out infestations, and trying to rebuild as much as you can. And there's going to be a variety of side quests and other story components that tie into this. Playing this mod list was some of the most fun I've had in Fallout 4 in a very long time. Even though I've done a bunch of zombie mods for Fallout 4, this mod list of several hundred mods all kind of geared towards one specific and curated experience created something completely different than I've ever had before. You know this is a different beast when in the first 10 minutes of playing, me and Codsworth go and take on our first zombie encounter, and yeah, Codsworth just died forever. And now you have to carry on playing all by yourself. The zombies are a core part of this mod list, but what it does a really good job at is setting the stage even before you encounter those zombies. You basically have no HUD here. You have to look around, use night vision to track enemy locations, and even use the Pip-Boy map all the time. Your compass is largely going to be disabled, and you have very little information on your screen at any given time. There's also going to be an E and B, as well as some environmental and texture mods added with this one, and I think it does a really good job at creating an appropriate atmosphere for the zombies the apocalypse. I really loved this version of the Commonwealth, and what really brought everything together was the soundscape. You will just hear terrifying noises. Sometimes this will be from a zombie you are encountering, and other times it'll just be in the distance of something that you may or may not want to go check up on. The sounds you're going to hear all throughout experiencing this one will definitely raise your heart rate a bit, and this all served to create some incredibly memorable zombie encounters overall. You're going to find a huge array of different types of zombies thanks to a bunch of different zombie mods being added with this one, but also a ton of unique weapons to deal with that zombie threat. This mod list does a great job at replacing several of those familiar Fallout 4 weapons with better zombie killing alternatives. And trust me, going out at nighttime with this mod list is absolutely terrifying. I'm honestly not sure if turning on night vision and knowing what's out there makes it less scary or more scary. I think it makes it more scary. I'd rather just not know until they take me out. One aspect of this mod list I really liked is that although there is a core component of struggling to survive, it isn't so much about each individual shot being deadly. Like, yeah, you can get hit by a zombie a few times, you're not going to immediately drop dead, especially if you do have decent armor or other perks. But rather, the difficulty with this list is it is a world absolutely filled with zombies. 
and if you stay put for too long after getting in a zombie encounter, more are going to show up. And you're simply going to be overwhelmed by zombies, so even though you can survive several hits, the sheer volume of hits will overwhelm you. If the horde manages to catch up to you, you are done for, so you have to constantly stay on the move. But overall, there's quite a few fun interactions with this one. At different times, you're going to get a distress signal from other survivors in the Commonwealth that you can rescue and bring back to your settlement to start building things up, or even just be tasked with clearing out zombie infestations, which could give you other bonuses. Overall, it's a very unique and super fun experience. You will be genuinely fighting to survive in Fallout 4, and it makes that settlement system actually have a legit purpose. But maybe you don't want to be on the side of humans, and instead you want to struggle to survive while fighting other humans. Well, another incredible mod list from the Fallout 4 Experiences team is Stay Frosty. This is going to be one of the most extreme and hardcore Fallout 4 overhauls, to the point where you are genuinely going to be valuing and counting every bullet you have on you. And you will run out of ammo and have to resort to fists somewhat frequently. Frost is already a pretty popular mod for Fallout 4, I'm sure many of you watching have heard of it. Although Frost came out several years ago now, a group of modders have been working on updating and adding new features to the mod, and Stay Frosty is going to be an effort turned into a full mod list around that. And to me, this mod list is the definitive way to experience Frost today, as it will deliver you a very nicely patched and balanced mod list for that ultimate Frost experience. One of the pretty cool parts about Frost is, not only is it going to be a damage or combat overhaul for Fallout 4, but also really a world and story overhaul. Frost is going to take you back to a time shortly after the bombs drop. You find the Commonwealth engulfed in a nuclear winter with its own unique story, factions, and even new locations. This is not going to be the same Fallout 4 you are used to. And once in game, you're going to have to take things incredibly slow with this mod. You're going to be worrying not only about the typical survival elements like getting food and finding shelter because you will need to sleep, but there's also entire mechanics around maintaining your humanity, and you can degrade to a point where you start hallucinating and see things that you typically wouldn't. Every single combat encounter you have while playing this mod will be deadly. Even just seeing one singular enemy over the horizon is scary because you know they can have a huge impact on you. And although a huge part of this mod is exploring this newly winterized commonwealth, scavenging for supplies, whether that be ammo, weapons, or other things, one of the things I really like about Frost is it does does have a huge story component and a bunch of new factions added as well. Some familiar Fallout 4 characters are going to be present during this one, at least the ones that make sense to, as well as there are going to be safe haven locations that are set up in this world and new and distinct factions that occupy them. There's going to be a bunch of new factions, some of which will start off as enemies, but you can later join that faction as a member if you do the right things. So though early on you'll definitely be clearing out any enemy outpost you encounter for basic supplies, very quickly you can start trading for some of those supplies and you'll become familiar familiar with some of the interconnected metro systems and bases around them. Overall, Stay Frosty is definitely not going to be a mod list for everyone. This is probably one of the most hardcore Fallout 4 experiences you can have right now, but believe me, playing this is definitely one of the most unique experiences you can have in Fallout 4 right now as well, and Stay Frosty is definitely the definitive way to experience Frost in 2023. But then we have something completely different. Fallout 4 Me, or Modding Essentials, is a very unique list because on its own, it actually does very little. Lists like this have begun popular popping up more and more, and I think Fallout 4 Me is one of the best options. As basically what this one is going to do is download all of the essential core mods for Fallout 4 that you typically would, basically creating a nice jumping off point to start actually modding the game. So with this, you use Wabajack to automatically download all of these mods, rather than having to manually download the same 70 dependent mods that you do every single time. And it gets even better because this will deliver to you an incredibly well organized mod organizer, so you have everything nicely categorized and you could just start adding whatever mods you want to atop of that. This is one of those lists that should really appeal to people who in general don't like the idea of mod lists. If you're somebody out there who much prefers to curate their own mod experiences in Fallout 4, this is still a mod list that's probably interesting to you. It takes a lot of the hassle out of those early hours of modding and allows you to really focus on the fun part of finding unique mod synergies or even just the best weapon mods. Atomic Warfare is going to be a Wabajack based mod list made by the Modding Lounge, and they too are a team creating mod lists for numerous games, including this one. This is going to be a mod list of nearly 500 mods that I installed in literally just a few clicks with Wabajack. It was as simple as install the game, install the mod list, and then click play, and I was good to go with about a 500 mod load order. Atomic Warfare is going to be a Stalker or Tarkov-like overhaul for Fallout 4. 
It's going to add in a ton of features to emphasize the survival experience in game, but not to a ridiculous degree. I would almost describe this as a more casual and a more approachable version of hardcore survival. It's not on the level of Frost, where you have to be careful with every single step you take, and you're not going to be searching for ages just to find one shotgun, but at the same time, this is definitely a bit more intense and a bit more interesting than vanilla Fallout 4 survival. You're going to have even deadlier enemies, as well as more complex healing mechanics and a gas mask requirement at all times. After all, we are in the apocalypse. This will definitely be another mod list that requires you to slow things down as you're playing Fallout 4. Every enemy you encounter will still be a threat, and you aren't always sure how much of a threat they're going to be, which is one of the pretty interesting components of this mod list. Some of the mod combinations this is using will result in some enemy stats being somewhat randomized. So even though two raiders may look similar or look the same, they may not actually have the same stats. Some will definitely be tankier and deadlier. It overall makes the combat encounters far more dynamic and interesting beyond just what weapon the enemy is using. And Atomic Warfare is definitely a complete experience. It does have this survival emphasis and not only implements combat features and new components around that, but also a bunch of visual and sound aspects also. The Fallout 4 soundscape is once again totally overhauled with this mod list. Your footsteps will now actually have a certain weight to them. And even some of the sound effects around looting does create a certain tension with it. As well as visually, the Commonwealth looks great here. It's going to be far more overgrown and just have a bleaker filter. Not to the point where things look washed out, but just where there's a casual layer of dread which feels pretty perfect in Fallout 4. And although that emphasis of simply surviving in Fallout 4 becomes cornerstone with a mod list like this installed, it also does take things far beyond that. There's going to be a karma system implemented into the game, so clearing out baddies and just trying to do the right thing does actually have some rewards. But there's also going to be a variety of quests and weapon mods to make your experience in the Commonwealth actually feel unique and memorable, but also novel. There will be a focus on survival and surviving, but also just a lot of other new mechanics and features added in with this one. Overall, Atomic Warfare is a nearly 500 mod load order that I installed with 10 clicks or less that truly brings a stalker-like survival experience into Fallout 4. But one of the other great parts about mod lists like this is you're able to freely add any mod you want whenever you want. So check out this video I recently did on the top 10 Fallout 4 mods of 2022 for some further inspiration. Otherwise, thank you all again for watching, and I'll see you guys all next time.